Pierre Poilievre's sharp critique of Justin Trudeau's extravagant spending on luxury plain food hits a nerve, especially considering the increasing number of Canadians facing homelessness and food insecurity. That's a little bit rich coming from him as he raises taxes on single moms for the crime of driving to the grocery store while he treats himself to a jet-setting experience where the food on the plane out of a six-day trip was $220,000. Beef brisket, parsley potatoes with truffle oil, beef tenderloin with port wine sauce, braised lamb shanks, and even cheese case cake with pistachio brittle. Mr. Speaker, with Canadians lined up at the food bank, what's on the menu for this Prime Minister this summer? He is standing with the wealthiest Canadians and against the idea of them paying a little more so that Canadians, can, young Canadians can buy a home, so that seniors can get their teeth fixed, so that young families can find a place in childcare. Mr. Speaker, there's nothing cheap about the $220,000 that he spent on one trip for food alone. There's nothing cheap, Mr. Speaker, about the Prime Minister spending $220,000 for food alone on a six-day jet-setting tour for himself. All the while, homelessness up 38%. Toronto has 256 homeless encampments, where one in 10 people in that city are now eating at food banks. They joined 2 million Canadians. The good news is life was not like this before this prime minister, and it won't be like this after he's gone. Can we not have a carbon tax election now to choose a government that will ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime? Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives over this past session have stood in this House to stand against dental care for seniors. They have stood in this House to stand against expanding childcare investments and spaces. They have stood in this House to stand against the kinds of investments that are helping Canadians uh, with diabetes, uh, Canadians uh, for birth control. Poilievre stresses the importance of fiscal responsibility and government accountability. And it is likely many will resonate with his condemnation of such lavish expenditures amidst a growing crisis. Supporting Poilievre's call for a government that prioritizes the needs of its citizens over opulent spending is vital for maintaining public trust and ensuring responsible governance. His criticism underscores the need for authentic leadership that truly understands and addresses the struggles of everyday Canadians. The public yearns for a government whose actions reflect principles of fairness and justice. Yet Trudeau's policies often appear as temporary fixes, seemingly detached from the harsh realities faced by many. The lavish spending by Trudeau can be seen as a direct affront to the public's collective spirit, fostering a sense of disillusionment and distrust in political leaders. Poilievre's narrative, contrasting Trudeau's indulgence with the daily hardships of ordinary Canadians, paints a stark and emotional picture of injustice. Meanwhile, Trudeau's emphasis on investments in social programs like dental care and child care for the elderly, although commendable, might be perceived as an attempt to deflect attention from his personal spending habits. Critics might argue that Poilievre's focus on fiscal responsibility fails to address the immediate concerns of government luxury directly. Yet, his message strikes a chord with those who see the need for true leadership, one that aligns its spending with the genuine needs of its people, fostering a sense of trust and integrity in governance.